All right, so here at the top right-hand corner of Taldrium Altar, we have Complexity Minigunny is spawning as our blue Protoss player now. Uh, and uh, his opponent down in the bottom left-hand corner, again, a little unclear as to what his status is. I know he's off of Complexity, but we'll call him Complexity Cruncher. It's what I've been saying for so long. Um, so I'm not sure what his status is in pro gaming, but he did sign up for our qualifier. So he is our orange Protoss down at the bottom left. Arry mateys. Arr! Somebody in the chat wanted me to really do that, yes. so I thought I would. Uh, by the way, guys, this is a great opportunity for you guys to go ahead and follow our social media. Uh, you guys can find us on IGN Pro League from Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Justin TV. And you guys can also follow myself at uh, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at HG Starcraft. You guys can follow him at Cat's Pajamas SC2. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, the first map is Taldrium Altar, and you know what happens when you have Taldrium Altar and two Protoss players. Hmm. Why, friends, that means you're going to have a four gate. More than likely. reason for that is, of course, because the uh, main to the natural is on even ground. There's no high ground or low ground, so no defender's advantage. And we already have PvP, which is basically no defender's advantage to begin with. Mm -hmm. It just kind of exacerbates that problem a little bit. And if you don't four gate, well, you better be prepared to receive a four gate because they will be attacking you pretty early into the game. Yeah, you know, 4-gate on this map is really, really good. Um, Protoss players are known for being extremely offensive. I love the people saying that this people are isn't like... Who is it? Who is it? Oh, J-L-A-C-K-E and T-R-G-X-B-U-B-R-U-V. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Yeah. I will be completely honest with you guys. I didn't want to cast today because I wanted to go trick-or-treating, but I'm here casting for you guys because I am. And I am definitely 100% live. <laughs> there you go. I will anyway, not be receiving candy well, tonight because I'm casting StarCraft. We, we won't talk about it anymore because this is going to be rebroadcast a few times, so we don't want to uh, confuse anyone who actually is going to be watching this later on. Nonetheless, um, let's go ahead and take a look at where we're at now. Minigun finishing up his gas just after his opponent's cybernetics cores down. Looks like uh, Minigun actually just a little bit behind on his building timings because he is one probe ahead. Decided to throw down his structures just one supply later, so minor difference differences at the moment. It's just really going to be telling to see when gas number two comes down. Yeah, well, once again, uh, we were just kind of hinting at about this before, Kevin. The Protoss versus Protoss matchup on Tower Room Altar is very, very much, it's an offensive oriented game, and a map like Tower Room Altar just doesn't really offer you that many uh, defenders' uh, points to, to really take control and, and hold down a one base or even a fast expand, uh, which, you know, God forbid, in Protoss versus Protoss is damn near impossible. Huh. So I, I would imagine we're going to see a four gate out of both players here. Cruncher is currently boosting the warp gate technology on the Cybernetics core. He has scouted into Minigun's base as well, who at the same time seems to be going for a 4-gate of his own. The only thing is he hasn't dropped Chrono Boost and yet. And Minigun has actually gone after a second gas as well. So if he does play the 4-gate, he's going to be a little bit more defensive about it. A couple mm -hmm. extra sentries uh, thrown in there. Or maybe just outright stalker play. We'll find out when the time comes. Um, but you are exactly right, as Minigun was Chrono Boosting out stalkers, trying to get that early advantage rather than put that straight into Warp Gate technology. Cruncher pulling ahead in that regard. And Cruncher throwing down gates number 2, 3, and 4 down at his base. Yeah, now the difference here is Minigun's going to have a couple extra stalkers before Cruncher, and I, I would like to see him be aggressive with these opening stalkers, because if Cruncher's going to cr use his Warp Gate on, and Chrono Boost on Warp Gate, then his forces are going to come later. Minigun's going to have an open field advantage, early field advantage here. Minigun, though, will eventually, I would imagine, get up to 4 Gate, but uh, he's going to be a little bit later in that regard. Ooh, he's got to start running away with those stalkers, uh, though. That's not uh, good. We have two stalkers and a Zella pursuing, but against three stalkers, I apologize, that's actually two Stalkers and a Zealot for uh, Minigun, and that wasn't a third Stalker, or second Stalker there for uh, Crunch, it was actually a probe that's trying to set down a couple of forward pylons. Ooh, pylon coming under attack. If Minigun can actually deny that, he mm. effectively shuts down the uh, I don't the think he's going to get it, though. That was actually pretty crucial. If he yeah. had gotten that pylon down, that would have been a huge, huge uh, benefit for him. Uh, but now he's actually going to have to fall back. He's going to try to kill off another pylon coming up here. That's good for him, so he doesn't have to worry about the reinforcing route, route being right at his natural. But, uh, you know, a little bit of divergence here. He's opting to go with the robotics facility and three gate. Yeah. So if he can hold this off and get those immortals out, he might be in a spot to hold things down. But oh, he kills off the good, pylon. Good. That That's is huge. For Minigun. Yeah, that's actually quite critical. Uh, yeah. as those reinforcements are significantly delayed, and now Minigun has bought himself all the time he needs to establish that uh, robotic facility and make sure that he has sufficient units to go ahead and hold everything off. Look at that. Immortal number one coming up. There's already one sentry out, a second joining the battle as well. Um, and with Cruncher, with that just one gas, very, very offensive four gate style. Look at that. I mean, his minerals were up so high because he couldn't uh, rally in units for quite a long period of time. He's mm -hmm. back in supply, he's back in tech. Minigun is actually in a really good place. 
Yeah, Minigun is, uh, he's got the tech advantage. He has a unit slight disadvantage, but he has probe advantage to kind of offset that. Uh, right now, all he has to really do is just play defensive and hold off this attack, because Immortal is now out, and, man, we all know how good Immortals are against Stalkers. They will slay them very quickly. Yeah, uh, spe especially of the non-blink variety. Yeah. Cruncher here is going to have to look to do some serious damage here, and hopefully he goes in before the second Immortal arrives. That's when pretty much the brick wall has been erected, and I don't see him busting through a double Immortal wall, especially when he's going so stalker heavy. Exactly. Mr. Chad MF and Jones up by about nine supply as well overall, and he's continuing to produce workers, so he's actually going to be um, fine if this ends oh. up progressing past this first uh, fight. There's the second but, uh, Immortal. Yep, Minigun actually has the second Immortal out. Whoa! And, uh oh, oh. Cruncher. We have units coming in for... Minigun? Looks like just a probe for now. Interesting. You know what? Uh, it looks like Cruncher here is just going to set up a contain with the foregate, feign the aggression, and behind this he's going to try to get an expansion, but uh, little does he know there is a pylon down here, so Minigun could be aggressive. He could definitely shut that Nexus down. It depends whether or not he is going to scout it, because as it stands, his probe is not going to see the Nexus, so right now he really doesn't know how many forces are being warped outside his natural. He could think, you know, it's just a contain, or he might think it's a super all-out aggression, and as it stands, he's got to play very defensive. I, I hope, Kevin, he makes some units at this pylon, and he is. So he should be able to apply a little aggression on this fast expand. Yeah, and there's really not much. I think there was one stalker out there for uh, Cruncher, but I think he actually ran that away through the middle of the map there. Yeah, yeah it's, so there's actually nothing to defend. Um, and any reinforcements that come here into wow, the main... just three zealots. Perfect warping right there. Yes, but uh, you know, Minigun actually got the first couple of hits, so unless these probes get a great surround, he will have a little bit of an advantage. No mm -hmm. engagement being forced back at the main of Minigun, however. Yeah. Um, and there we go. There's a couple of stalkers coming in. So now, um, is he going to see it? He does see it. That is a huge scout right there. Minigun now warping in additional units. Uh, you know, at this point, Minigun realizes, okay, there's not that many forces out my front because Cruncher did expand, and now he pushes out, uses the force fields, and Cruncher just goes with the quick GG.